Hey guys, <clears throat> um, I've been feeling um, really strong that God wants me to share my testimony with you. I mean, I share it all the time with people in my life, um, but I felt like uh, he wanted me to publicly release it, <clears throat> tell our story together to you. Um, maybe a lot of people don't understand the way I do things or why I do things, but maybe once you hear my story, you'll understand uh, my life with God. It's not always perfect. It's, it's not always where I want it to be, and I know where He wants it to be. I go through hills and valleys, but this is a very important thing because I just, I know He he won't leave me alone. As I say, anytime you get, I don't get on here to get on here and just show you my face and because I don't like this. Um, so if I'm getting on here, I'm getting on here because he pressed me to. And um, he's really pressed me to tell this story. Um, I'm going to give you a quick little background. Maybe not. I don't know what all he's going to have me say. I really don't. My background was... Um, I grew up a very in insecure little girl <laughs> and going up through a high school I faced um, middle school and high school I faced rejection and all these emotions that just really seemed to affect me and um, it, the enemy used rejection and insecurity to um, just always whisper in my ear that I wasn't good enough and that I never would be and I didn't matter and um it was a constant soundtrack from hell and so I grew up I uh, got into high school um, I was raised in church. Let me say that. I was raised in a Baptist church my whole life, pretty much. Um, when I was around nine years old, you know, I walked the aisle. I did that whole thing. You know, I was a kid. I did what I felt like God told me to do. You know, I, he pressed on me that day and I went up the aisle, but it wasn't very long that the enemy began to feed things into me. He wanted to do everything he could to strip me away from God. And so, there were things that I would pray for and things that I wanted. And they wouldn't come. And instead, I would get heartbreak or not get with the things I prayed for. And it began to build a case against God. The hurt in my life began to build a case against God. And I began to see him as my enemy instead of my friend or instead of somebody who loved me and so um I actually started doing drugs um when I was about 15 and um I failed I always made really good grades and then my my grades started going down because I didn't care anymore I didn't hang out with the popular crowd. I, you know, I had a small little group of friends who were like my brothers. I was always kind of a tomboy. And, you know, I had a group of brothers who I love to this day. And I miss and I pray for. Um, so, I got involved with drugs and, and other things pretty early. And um, I actually had a conversation with God after praying what I felt was the last time and I told him I hate you I hate you you don't love me and I hate you and you're not real to me anymore and that day I that I was about 16 maybe 17 and I shut the door on God that day and I didn't talk to him anymore at all I didn't think about him anytime I would want to I'd push him out of my mind I said he's not real He's proved to me he's not real, you know. So, um, because the enemy had built up a case against God in my life, I began to live like the devil. Um, I became an atheist. Um, 
once I was an adult, I, um, I started telling people, uh, that there was no God. I didn't believe in him. He's not real. You know, and the way that I lived my life, um, in those years, I understand where a lot of people, the church can be real judgmental towards people who backslide and who turn their back on God or who don't believe that we can be real judgmental. Like, how dare you? But let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you, I'm a, I, I'd stake my life on it 99.9% .9 of the time. Those people have been deeply hurt and they didn't understand what was happening. And they, that's why they turn their back on God. So don't judge anybody. There's some things going on in their life you don't understand. They, they, don't, they needed answers to some questions they didn't get. But God knows. God knows what they need. And he let me stray. And he let me live this life where I just wanted to spit. I, I didn't. I, in, in the core of my being, I knew there was a God. But I wanted, I just wanted to spit in his face. I just wanted to live my life as a perpetual way to spit in his face. There was like a spirit, a demonic force that was behind me, whispered in my ear, pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to go further, go further. There was a hunger inside of me for being bad, I don't know how to describe it, for evil. You know, and a lot of the people that know me from back then, I was never, I mean, I was a nice person. I wouldn't hurt anybody, you know, and all that, but I, I was murdering myself. I was murdering my soul the whole time. And so, like I said, I, I want to do everything in my power to let God know I've turned my back on you. I'm not yours. Um, so, at 18, um, I was into very, very heavy drug use. I was doing some strong drugs at that time. It kind of escalated, you know. Started with weed. Escalated on up. And sorry, Mom and Dad. But it escalated up to cocaine. And really hard drugs and pills and, you know, I just smoked weed all day long, you know, things like that. And among other things that I really just don't want to discuss, but, um, at 18 I got pregnant, um, with my beautiful, beautiful boy. And I know that that was God sending me some safety. To, uh, it, my Savior sent Caleb to me because I would probably be dead. From an OD the way I was going at that point I mean we were I was partying hard I was partying hard I lived for it um, so he sent Caleb to me and I wanted to do the right thing I wanted to be a good mom you know he deserved it he didn't ask to come into the situation that he came into but then he came and like when I tell you God's blessing has been on him his whole life. He's the most beautiful boy. He, he was an angel. He was, he was a good baby. He was a good child. So well behaved. So respectful. So smart. I mean, he's amazing. And it wasn't very long that I wanted to do the right thing, but those old demons started creeping back in and telling me, you know, you're missing out on the party. God's still not answering your prayers. You know, every once in a while I would pray then. And I found myself that I would um, I would pray the opposite of what I wanted. Because I was like, God doesn't hear me. God doesn't want to, to, to touch me and bless me. So I'm going to pray the opposite. Then maybe he'll give me. Maybe I can trick him. And he would give me what I, I'm asking for. Give me some help that I, I want in a certain area or whatever. Um... So anyway, I fell back into drugs pretty hard. I didn't stay, I mean, I never really totally got off of them. You know. And so things got so dark in my life. So dark. That I would drive home from, 
I remember driving home from work, and I would scre be screaming at the top of my lungs. Somebody help me. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to have a different life than this. I need help. I am ruined. Everything is destroyed. I don't know what to do. I hate myself. I just want to die, but I can't die. I have a son. I just, and, and the despair that I felt because I felt like I was kind of, there was no hope. You know, and I'm like, but if God is out there, will you please notice me? Will you, if you're there, please just notice me. <sighs> so, looking back on that timeline, <laughs> it was right after that. I went from totally for years, having no presence of God in my life. I will say this, when I was out and about doing my dirt, um, there was always a small voice way, way, way in the back that would say, you don't belong here. And I would look around and everybody else was like, you know, and there was this voice that said, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. And I think that just added to my misery because I knew, like, all all I knew was, like, it was almost like, I mean, I, I did, I cut when I was young. And it was almost like when those people that cut, they just want to do something to feel something. Will somebody notice? Like, they don't want, they want somebody to notice. They might do it in secret, but they want, you want somebody to see that's why people destroy their lives on purpose. They just want somebody to see. And so, it wasn't very long after I would I went through this where it was just like rock bottom. And um, the only way I know how to describe this is I began to feel the presence of God in my life. It was like he just entered the room all of a sudden. And he was there. And it was like this sweet, sweet presence of hope began to surround my life. And I didn't even know what it was. I just felt a change. I felt a turn. I felt a difference. And I didn't start talking to him immediately. He used a couple situations that I actually like was like, okay, I really need you. Can, can you please? I know I don't pray too much, but like, would you please help me right now? Like, I got to pay this bill. And miraculously, like, money would like just I'd find this money to pay this bill like it was unbelievable and it was almost like he began to romance me begin to coax me that I'm here for you okay but he can't be here for you in that type of lifestyle he he's going to coax you to be for him his own special treasure so anyway I began to feel him in my life again. Um, and I, that didn't stop me from, from doing drugs or, or living the, the life of sin that I lived. I just began to feel him again. And so, um, I had moved, I had my own house for a while in New Orleans. And then I moved back in with my mom. She lived in New Orleans as well. She had an apartment. And I was like, you know what? It's just going to be easier. I'm just, me and Caleb are coming back home. I can live with you for a little while until I figure this out. Um, I was, uh, I'd become a massage therapist and I was kind of doing that. And, um, so but I was like, I still, I just want to come back home, you know? And so, um, the major turning point, my, this is, like, this is it. I was at my house with my mom. I don't know if she was there. I doubt it. She couldn't have been. Um, and Caleb wasn't there. I think he was at his other grandmother's house. And I was out on the porch area. And um, I was getting high, you know. And I was smoking like a little bit of something that I'd had and saved from the day before or whatever. And I, I was smoking. And, um... And, and, and I was in a rocking chair outside, and I was rocking. And um, as you get high, you start thinking deep about things, you know. 
And so I'm getting high and I start reflecting. And it was like I said, you know what, I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna just do this. And so not thinking what not thinking straight, you know, I wasn't out of control, just not thinking very straight. Um, I begin to talk to God while I'm getting high. And so I remember saying, uh, God, I know that you're real. Uh, God, I see that you've actually, you, you've protected me and Caleb all along. Thank you that he's safe and he's wonderful and I thank you for him. Thank you for keeping your hand on us. It means so much to me. And as I'm getting high and smoking and as I'm talking to God, I begin to feel, in a moment, I begin to feel all the hair on my body, just every cell became alert. And I knew that something was about to happen. So I'm sitting there and it's, and I knew, like, I knew what was about to happen. And it was a very clear night, okay? There was no rain, there was no storm, there was no clouds, there was nothing. It was a beautiful night. So in the same moment that this awareness overtakes me, thunder crashes all around me. And at the same time, his voice vibrated through me and said, don't do that while you're talking to me. It was like I heard the throne room of heaven explode around me. And in a moment, I felt his holiness. And I felt his worth. And I felt everything that I had done against him. And I felt so dirty and unworthy in a moment. And I... Immediately, I was. I thought he was going to strike me down dead. I thought, that's it. He's about to send lightning, and I'm going to be dead on the ground. And I ran inside, and I got in my bedroom, and I got immediately on my knees, and I said, God, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. I'll never touch it again. It's. I'm sorry. I give my life to you. I give myself to you. I give Caleb to you. I, I, I just, I give it all to you, okay? I repent. I'm so sorry. I'm yours. And when I tell you, he took the desire that I had for years and years and years and years to get high. <laughs> he took it in one night. I haven't touched it since. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God is good. He cleaned up everything. He cleaned it up. And, and, and there's been people that's made jokes and said, oh, you were just high. That's all you were feeling. You, you, you know, you had some kind of weird high. No. I, I know what it is to be high, and I know what it is to hear a voice of thunder tell you to get your life right. He was serious. He wanted me, and he had had enough, and he, he knew I was such a little hard-headed Italian girl that it was going to take God stepping off that throne and coming to me and saying, you better get your eyes on me. I want to love you. <laughs> I want to help you. I want to give you a purpose. I want to I want to change everything. I see your tears and I want to dry them up. I want you. And you know what? My whole life I'd suffered from rejection from people, from boys, from friends. I'd suffered rejection. And all of a sudden, I had God Almighty telling me, "I want you." <laughs> so I'm just here I know there's people out there that don't believe in God <laughs> people I know there's people that's mad at God there's people that just don't know what they believe but I'm here to tell you God's real God's real I heard his voice that's not the last time that's the only time I've heard the thunder the Bible says his voice is like thunder. 
And I always wonder, well, I heard him speak in English. The thunder was his voice. He thundered one time to tell me that and the rest of the night, nothing else. The voice was the thunder. What I felt and what I heard in English, well, no, what I heard in English was just me translating. He let me know what he was saying. Do you hear me? So, from that point on, I belong to God. And no, right away, I still didn't have it all together. I still don't. We're a constant work in progress. Um, but things began to fall off me. They said that you should lay down every weight. It was like weights falling off of me. One by one. Oh, things that I used to enjoy made me feel dirty. It made me just want to like scrub it. Like every time he would show me something else that was not holy and not good and not him. I was like, get that off of me. That's between me and you, God. I don't want this. This is standing between me and you. I want all you have. I want to be closer to you. And let me tell you something else. Let me tell you what that experience did. I wish everybody could have an experience like that. Because no man gets the glory. No man gets his glory for my salvation. No man gets to put his hand on what God did to me that day. He struck a chord. It was like I was, it was like I, my, my soul was an instrument that had laid barren. And all it took was one pluck and it began to sing. And when God himself tells you some, when he approaches you in that way and affects you in that way, it's like a tune and fork. And you, you, you can discern God's heart in the issues of life. You can discern God's heart in man's words. And no man, men have tried to, uh, women, whoever, people have still tried to cage, they, they want to cage people in. They want to cage people in and make them theirs. They want to lord over them, which the Bible talks about, by the way. You belong to God. You don't belong to a certain assembly. You belong to all of us. You belong to the body of Christ. Let him take you wherever he wants to take you. You don't have to put down roots in one place and never go anywhere else. That's not Jesus. He never stopped moving. He was affecting that world out there. He didn't stay stagnant. He didn't belong to a denomination because a denomination is division. And if you cling to your denomination, you're, ha you're happy with disunity in the body. Oh, I can only go to this church. Shame on you. You belong to God, not a church. He didn't come to build a denomination. He came to build his church. He came to build his people. He came to bring back his glory. And he wanted to advance a kingdom on this earth. And that's what you're called for. You belong to one. One shed his blood. One left that throne. And he came so he could, he could interact with you. And he could take you on a journey with him. I went back to church and God said, there's more. I went back to the Baptist church and they don't really believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and these more supernatural experiences with God, which is a normal lifestyle of a God, of, of a person that lives with God. You should, God doesn't expect you to have blind faith. Every, think about this. In the Bible, he walked through town to town doing miracles so they would know he was God. He'll prove himself to you. So I went there for a little while. I went and got on the, on the pew and I sat there with my daddy. And it meant something to me. Because for the first time in my life, I was hungry for God. I sat there and I took notes. And I read my Bible. And I was hungry. And I got through that season because but God started saying, There's more, Amber. There's more. There's more. And you know what? I had to walk away. And go somewhere else. Sometimes it takes you having to break hearts to move on with God. So I went somewhere else. And I learned about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the power that God has. I learned about these things I'd never heard before. And God filled me with his spirit in a way I'd never seen or experienced or known before. And I spoke with new tongues. And it was a beautiful experience. It's real. And... I was there for a little while, but then I saw, I saw people wanting to cage me in again. I saw people wanting to try to lord over me, and I said, I'm not doing that. I, this, I belong to God. And so we left there, broke hearts again. I don't like that we had to break hearts. 
But I'm sorry. The Bible says you got to hate people compared to me. You got to hate your mom and daddy compared to me. And no, I don't hate my mom and daddy. We don't hate our mamas and daddies. But compared to God, that's who we're going to follow no matter what it takes. And so God took us on this journey. And we would try to get involved in church. In church. And, and it was good. And there's like awesome people out there. But it's like there's been this journey ever since where it's just us and God. And he brings people in for seasons and brings people out for seasons. And there's interaction. There's a move. God's church is not an institution. It's an organism. It should never be, have been an institution. It's an organism. And it's living and it's breathing. He said he didn't come to build a house of wood and stone. He said he came to build a house of living stones. You're a stone. I'm a stone. We're living stones. The church ain't a building. The church ain't a denomination. And if you cling to a denomination, you better repent today because that's against God's heart. He came to build a body. He came. He didn't want this unity in the body. If this was my, this is my body. And if I take a rubber band real tight and I put it around my hand and I cut it off from the other part of my body, what's going to happen to my hand in a few days? It's going to wither up, die, and fall off. And that's exactly the problem. We got restrictions all up in the body. When the Bible says, you'll know them because they love each other. You'll know them by their love. And what do we do? We go and start dividing each other. Oh, you belong to that? Oh, well, I belong to this. That's disgusting and it's stinking the nostrils of God. Get a hold of God. Drop everything else. Drop everything else. The only reason, and he did this for him. It wasn't me. I didn't ask him to come speak in thunder. But he, he taught me. He taught me, I'm your God. I'm your path. I'm the voice. I'm your leader. Follow me. Don't let any man try to put ownership on you. I see it in the church and it's disgusting. Men trying to build their own kingdoms. It should not be so. God came and died to make us sons and daughters. We're brothers and sisters. And he wants to lead us where he wants to lead us. Stop trying to box people in. If you see somebody says, not my God showing me I need to do this or I need to go over here. And don't quit judging people and be like, ooh, what are they doing? Let people grow in God. Let people have their seasons in God. Take the shackles off the church, my God. Get hungry for God. Ever since God found me, do you know what he's allowed me to do? God didn't stop that day and say, okay, now you believe in me. We're good. See you in heaven. No, he interacts with me constantly. He's let me lay hands on the sick so many times and their sickness leaves their body without a doctor's help. He does that. Couldn't do it without him. Think I would dare lay my hands on a cancer patient when I wasn't living for God and be like, I'm going to touch you. You're going to be healed now. No, God heals his, he uses you. He, it says these signs will follow those that believe they'll, they'll speak with new tongues. They're going to heal the sick. They're going to cast out demons. Well, let's do it, guys. Let's do, get hungry. He's giving me dreams. He's giving me visions. They come true. God, God is not a sham. Religion's a sham. Religion, false religion, the, wor the machine that's been built is, is a sham. And it's shaken. And guess what? There's one cornerstone. And he told me he's about to shake the foundations. He's shaking it all loose. The church better get ready. He wants it built on him, nothing else. Not traditions, not one, not preachers. We're all called to preach. Your, your, your life should be a sermon. Everywhere you go, you should be preaching. I'm here to tell you, I'm, I'm not trying to come off mean, but I know what I know. God is so alive, and he's so vibrant, and he so wants to use his people. Drop your shackles today and know God is real. If you don't believe in God, I understand. I was there. I thought I was smarter than God. I thought, oh, I, pff, there ain't no God. How dare I think I'm smarter than a creator of the universe? Okay? 
Religion is dumb. God is not. And I'm begging you, get alone and say, God, I have not had you in my life. He's waiting for you to make that choice. He doesn't force himself on you. Respect God for that. He doesn't force himself on you. He wants you to choose. And he says, just come to me. If you will just come and say, God, I don't even know if you're real. I need to know if you're real. I promise you he's going to prove himself to you. If you really want to know. But if you want to stay in your old life and, and still, you're not sick of the old. You don't realize how real Satan is in your life. You don't see. He's blinded so many people that they, they, they still want to live in this destruction because they think. He's fooled them in that it feels good. It's fun. This is normal life. I, for years, I grew up thinking everybody was running from the cops at all times. I, I, I was going through a period where I thought everybody had to be afraid of their door getting kicked in. And they had to duck the police and put things, hide things and throw out things out the window and hide your gun. Don't let, you know, I, I thought it was normal to be spread out against the back of a cop car every other day. Some of y'all don't know me like that. But that's what I thought. I thought it was normal. I thought drama was normal. I thought, you know, all this just, ugh, was normal. And it's not. A life with God is peace and harmony and goodness. That, that's not going to say you're not going to come to trials and testings. And there's seasons. There's seasons of winter where it's scary and it's dried out. There's valleys. I just got out of one myself. I'm being real. But guess what? God is faithful, and he's going to pull you through, and he's going to be more evident after you get out of that valley. Guess what? At a valley's low. You're going to come up to that mountaintop, and he's going to be more evident than ever. You're going to be see seeing clearer than ever. God is real, and I know, because not only did he speak to me that first day in a, a voice of of thunder it wasn't some imaginary whisper it was a voice of thunder that vibrated my whole not body being and ever since then he has continually blown my mind with the things he's done with me through me to me shown me told me you know he don't just tell me things he proves them after he uses me through it. And he's going to do the same for you if you will just say, God, I'm a mess right now. I got to lay it all down and trust you now. Will you please come into my situation? Will you please come into my life? I, even if you've grown up with God your entire life, if you will just come to him and say, I'll still lay it all down. I know I'm far away. And I know that you said you're the redeemer. You said that you would come. You're the Savior. I need the Savior right now. And let him come redeem you. Let him come save you. Your works, you're, 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 they're, not, they're, they're worthless. Your works are worthless. Let him be the Lord. Let him be the Savior. All it takes is you to acknowledge, I am broken and I need help. Because the Bible says you must be born again. You've got to be. Keep dying. Paul said, I die daily. Keep dying to self and saying, God, I need you. Because we all do. So, I, I feel like that's all he really wanted me to tell you. And I just want to see the world saved. I just want to see everybody know how real God is. I want Judgment Day to come and there'll be zero in the line for hell. <laughs> I want everybody to find God because he's so real and he's so worth it and he's so good. And he wants you. He wants you. He wants you. You don't have to go. Just pray to God. <laughs> just say that prayer where you acknowledge him you don't need somebody to lead you in it it's heartfelt if you say it for yourself say what he put on your heart to tell him what's he showing you you don't have to go say the sinner's prayer with a preacher that's not even in the bible go get along with God and start your relationship off you and him nobody else gets the glory you and him no religion you and him and watch He's, that's where he wants to build his church at 
He's shaking everything off, man. He's shaking it all off. So you get alone today, Lord. Please, God, let it be today. I have so many friends that I grew up with that I love. My handful, close little friends, they're all still alive because I've prayed for them for years. But let me tell you what. I, there's probably 20 people that we were closer to, not real close to, but were in our vicinity. They're all dead due to OD. All of them dead are brain dead, like totally burnt, no life whatsoever. God spared me. He'll sp I mean, come on. God gets the glory. God gets all the glory. So God bless you today. I'm rambling. I love y'all. Bye-bye.